Part 3. Behold Thy Mother The End from the Beginning, Isaiah 41, 4 In the Sacrificial Law, in Type and Antitype Copyright August 1, 1980 by Lois I. Roden All Rights Reserved All parentheses and emphasis ours unless stated otherwise Living Waters, P.O. Box 4666, Belmy, Texas 76705 Phone 1-817-863-5325 Printed in the United States of America Behold Thy Mother Part 3 Forward Because of the times in which we live, Volumes 1 through 3 of Behold Thy Mother have been written as merely an outline for the individual to stimulate the research and study on the person, intercession, and gender of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Portions from a cross-section of the writings of scholars, both ancient and modern, from different parts of the world, have been gathered and compiled for those who respect the opinion of their peers on a variety of subjects. As most laymen have been totally unaware of these scholarly findings, the author has attempted, in a small way, to make the information concerning the personality, intercession, and gender of the Holy Spirit available to the masses for an evaluation of the meaning to the individual seeker of Bible truth and revelation of the prophecies in the latter days. Being a lay person herself, the author sees a great need for easily available, free material to be at the disposal of the average individual who wishes to expand his mental horizons to include the wisdom of the ages from the, quote, beginning, end quote, to the, quote, end. End quote. but who, because of the lack of time for exhaustive research, remains ignorant of the evidences on record concerning the revelation of the Godhead to the human family whose image they are. By interviewing scholars of different faiths at home and in foreign countries, the author has had verification for the position she has taken on the femininity of the Holy Spirit by personal testimonies, archaeological findings, and the writings of the ancients, but most importantly, from the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Means derived from the publications are used to print more and more copies to scatter freely as leaves of autumn throughout the world. All who read and appreciate the literature are encouraged to contribute to the massive publishing outreach by the Living Waters Branch in means and by personal labor to see that everyone who wishes may have access to the publications without cost. Study groups are encouraged to establish branches all over the world where families can study the Bible together with their children and pattern their homes after the great original in heaven, the tree of life as demonstrated by the family after whom everything in heaven and earth is named, the Father, Holy Spirit, and the Son, the Trinity. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father and Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Jeremiah 33, 15 and 16, Isaiah 62, 2, Revelation 3, 12, Branch. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit, Mother, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height of the Trinity, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, knowledge and power of the Trinity. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit Mother. End quote. Ephesians 3, 14 to 19 and 21 to be, quote, as God, end quote. quote. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them, end quote. Zechariah 12, 8. Quote. Now that we might know what it means to be as God, we must study what God is like. At the outset, he did not only create and abundantly fill the earth with every good thing for his creatures, but he also planted a garden, home, for the man and woman. 
Even after the holy pair fell in sin, God was still interested in them as he was before, so much so, in fact, that he immediately began to teach them how to redeem themselves and to return to their eternal home. From that day to this, he thus continued to teach the human family. End quote. 1 TG Revised, number 9, pages 7 and 8. Parentheses theirs, brackets ours. Quote, Heavenly angels more fully opened to our first parents the plan that had been devised for their salvation. Adam and his companion were assured that notwithstanding their great sin, they were not to be abandoned to the control of Satan. End quote. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 66. Quote, With the earliest history of man, Satan began his efforts to deceive our race. He who had incited rebellion in heaven desired to bring the inhabitants of the earth to unite with him in his warfare against the government of God. Adam and Eve had been perfectly happy in obedience to the law of God, and this fact was a constant testimony against the claim which Satan had urged in heaven that God's law was oppressive and opposed to the good of his creatures. And furthermore, Satan's envy was excited as he looked upon the beautiful home prepared for the sinless pair. He determined to cause their fall, that having separated them from God and brought them under his own power, he might gain possession of the earth and here establish his kingdom in opposition to the Most High. End quote. Great Controversy, page 531. Quote, when Adam and his sons began to offer the ceremonial sacrifices ordained by God as a type of the coming Redeemer, his shed blood, Satan discerned in these a symbol of communion between earth and heaven. He sought to misrepresent God and to misinterpret the rites pointing to the Savior, his sacrifice. End quote. Prophets and Kings, page 685. Quote, the central theme of the Bible, the theme about which every other in the whole book clusters, is the redemption plan, the restoration in the human soul of the image of God. From the first intimation of hope in the sentence pronounced in Eden to that last glorious promise of the revelation, they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads, Revelation 22.4. The burden of every book and every passage of the Bible is the unfolding of this wondrous theme, man's uplifting, the power of God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrificial Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. End quote. Education, page 125 and 126. Parenthesis theirs, brackets ours. Quote. He who grasps this thought has before him an infinite field for study. He has the key that will unlock to him the whole treasure house of God's word. End quote. Education, page 126. Quote, the science of redemption is the science of all sciences, the study of the angels, the unfallen worlds that engages the attention of our Lord and Savior that enters into the purpose brooded in the mind of the infinite that will be the study of God's redeemed throughout endless ages. This is the highest study in which it is possible for man to engage." End quote. Ibid. To learn again how this plan of redemption through the sacrificial offerings from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden by the Godhead, who clothed Adam and Eve in the temporary animal skin covering, should bring mankind back to their original perfect state of face-to-face -face communion with God, to be again surrounded with a glorious halo of light as God and the angels. God says, quote, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. End quote. Jeremiah 33, 3. Quote, the creative energy that called the worlds into existence is in the word of God. This word imparts power, it begets life. It brings with it the life of the Infinite One. It transforms the nature and recreates the soul in the image of God. End quote. Education, page 126. Remember, two divine beings said, Let us make man, Adam, in our image, likeness, male and female, 
and God, quote, called their name Adam, end quote, two Adams as one flesh, male and female, Genesis 2.24, with the same name. The real beginning of the sacrificial law, the spoken word. Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, Genesis 14.18, slew the first sacrifices in the Garden of Eden to clothe Adam and Eve after they sinned, Genesis 3.21. They were originally clothed with a halo of purest light, and both talked with God face to face with no veil between, Genesis 3, 8 through 10. When sin entered, this glorious light departed, leaving them without a covering, Genesis 3, 7. Therefore, the Godhead provided clothing of animal skins, hair, for their covering, which was a symbol of sin and an unnatural covering for God's hitherto sinless creation. 1 SR, page 55. Thus, when the tabernacle in the wilderness was built, the same symbol, hair, was used for a covering, which was symbolic of sin-bearing. Quote, And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins, dyed red, and a covering of badger's skins above that. End quote. Exodus 36, 19. Confessed sins were transferred from the sinner to the sanctuary, Quote, covered by the hair, end quote, of animal skins. Then the sanctuary, a symbol of a feminine sin-bearer, bore the sins. Man and woman were created equally pure and holy in the image of God, Genesis 1.27, without sin. They were covered with a glorious light, the perfect knowledge of God, Genesis 3.7. This glory disappeared at the entrance of sin, Thereafter, they could commune with God only in an indirect manner, that is, through the sacrificial offerings and a mediator, until such time as the true sacrifice was to be made in the form of God the Son, and direct communion finally restored through God the Holy Spirit. Quote, By sin earth was cut off from heaven, and alienated from its communion, but Jesus has connected it again with the sphere, circle, of glory, the Holy Spirit. End quote. Desire of Ages, page 113. Thus, we see two mediators, two intercessors, Romans 8, 26 and 34, two sacrifices for sin, Leviticus 16, 5, one, Jesus, who died, and one, the Holy Spirit, who lives. Two members of the Godhead, male and female, and their images in the earth working for the salvation of mankind. Quote, the Godhead was stirred with pity for the race, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit gave themselves to the great working out of the plan of redemption through the sacrifices of the ceremonial system. Councils on Health, page 222. End quote. 7a Bible Commentary, page 442. The sacrifices of the ceremonial law were instituted at the gate of Eden to reclaim God's lost creation and re-establish them again in their earthly kingdom, quote, as Eden, end quote. Quote, the death of God's only begotten Son, the second Adam, upon the cross in the sinner's behalf, is the unanswerable argument as to the changeless character of the law of Jehovah, end quote. Review and Herald, May 23, 1899. Adam, a created son of God, and Eve, a created daughter of God, were made in the images of two persons of the Godhead. That is, they were heaven's representatives, mediators between heaven and earth. Eve was a symbol of God's temple, woman, and Adam was a symbol of her, the temple, priesthood. Two intercessors were revealed, one by Adam, whose death was recorded in the earth and which pointed to the Messiah, the second Adam, who should come and die for the sins of the world, John 1, 29. Quote, another, end quote, intercession by Eve, whose death was not recorded in the earth, and which pointed to a second Eve, a representative of the Holy Spirit, who would come to reveal one who never dies, another, a second antitypical Adam, she, with the new name of Jesus, the second Adam, the Messiah. Quote, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou, the church, woman, shall be called by a new name with the mouth, 
one selected messages, page 409, of the Lord, Melchizedek, shall name, end quote. Isaiah 62, 2, Revelation 3, 12, quote, Male and female created him them, and called their name Adam. Two Adams, a male and a female. Two Messiahs, male and female. End quote, Genesis 5, 2. Behold Thy Mother, Part 3, The Prophecy of Restoration Quote, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth, the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. End quote. Joel 2, 2 and 3. Quote, and they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I the Lord build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts, indicating the restoration of the sanctuary service again in Jerusalem, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. End quote. Ezekiel 36, 35-38 The restoration from the beginning, the sacrificial law under the spoken word, the unwritten law. 1. Adam and Eve and family. Quote, Unto Adam also and to his wife, two images of God, male and female, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. End quote. Genesis 3, 21 and 24. Quote, at the cherubim-guarded gate of paradise the divine glory was revealed. Hither came Adam and his sons to worship God. End quote. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 62. Quote, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. End quote. Genesis 3.15 To man the first intimation of redemption was communicated in the sentence pronounced upon Satan in the garden. Genesis 3.15 This sentence, uttered in the hearing of our first parents, was to them a promise while it foretold war between man and woman and Satan, it declared that the power of the great adversary would finally be broken. But Christ, by his sacrifice paying the penalty of sin, would not only redeem man, but recover the dominion which he had forfeited. All that was lost by the first Adam will be restored by the second. Says the prophet, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. Micah 4, 8. End quote. Ibid, pages 65 through 67. The promised seed was the Messiah who should vanquish Satan by his death and resurrection and restore the kingdom, the land, to her seed. God established the covenant, sacrificial system, beginning with Adam and Eve and their sons as a symbol of the promised restitution of the people and the land of promise, quote, as Eden, end quote, and of the connection between earth and heaven that was to exist continually until this complete restoration is finally accomplished. 2. Abel, quote, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. End quote. Genesis 4.4 4. Abel obeyed the requirements of the sacrificial law, 
and was accepted of God, while Cain disobeyed and his offering was rejected. 3. Noah and Family Quote, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. End quote. Genesis 8.20 God established his covenant, the sacrificial law, again with Noah, quote, And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. End quote. Genesis 9.11 4. Abraham and Family quote, And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle-dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And it came to pass that, when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. End quote. Genesis 15, verses 9, 10, 17, chapter 22, verses 2 and 13. Through the sacrificial offerings, God again established his covenant with Abraham to give him and his seed the land of Canaan forever, an earthly kingdom, quote, as Eden, end quote. Ezekiel 36, verses 35 to 38. However, Hebrews 11 tells us that all these died in faith, not having realized the promise of receiving the land, showing a future fulfillment to come before the end of time according to God's promise and his integrity to perform it. Quote, Wherever he pitched his tent, close beside it was set up his altar, calling all within his encampment to the morning and the evening sacrifice. End quote. Page, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 128. Quote, Though this covenant of the land to his seed was made with Adam and renewed to Abraham, it could not be ratified until the death of Christ. It had existed by the promise of God since the first intimation of redemption had been given. Genesis 3.15 It had been accepted by faith. Yet, when ratified by Christ, it is called a new covenant to restore the land. The law of God was the basis of this covenant, which was simply an arrangement for bringing men again into harmony with the divine will, placing them in the land of promise where they could obey God's law. End quote. Ibid, pages 370 to 371. Thus, in the death of Christ, this promise of the restoration of the earthly kingdom, restoration of the land to Abraham's seed, was assured, irrevocable. 5. Isaac and Family Quote, And the Lord appeared unto him, and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. End quote. Genesis 26, verses 2, 4, 24, and 25. Isaac said, quote, And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. End quote. Genesis 27, verse 4. 
Then Rebekah instructed Jacob, quote, Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. End quote. Genesis 27, verses 9 and 10. The sacrificial law was the, quote, works, end quote, that showed their faith in obedience to God's promise to give the land to Abraham's seed. So Isaac blessed Jacob to inherit the land as God had promised to Abraham. Rebekah performed the duties of a priest to secure Jacob's blessing through two sacrificial offerings, two kids. 6. Jacob and Family Quote, In Jacob's time, his family was, one, the repository of the unwritten word of God, Jacob the prophet, two, the holy temple, his wife, and three, the congregation of the saints, his sons. Being all three a trinity, it was therefore the living church of God on earth. Jacob accordingly interpreted the sun, moon, and stars as symbolical of his household, the light of the world then. End quote. Five track, page 51, parenthesis, theirs, brackets, ours. Quote, and the fact that the father, the mother, and the twelve sons comprised the church at that time is conclusive evidence in the proof that the sun, the moon, and the stars, three light-giving objects, are figurative of the church of God in three parts. End quote. Five track, pages 51 and 52. When Jacob turned his steps homeward, quote, two hosts of heavenly angels seemed to encompass him behind and before, advancing with his company as if for their protection. Jacob remembered the vision at Bethel so long before, and his burdened heart grew lighter at this evidence that the divine messengers, plural, who had brought him hope and courage at his flight from Canaan, were to be the guardians of his return. And he said, this is God's host. 2. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Two hosts, the Messiah and the Shekinah, or camps. End quote. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 195. The Patriarch Jacob was well instructed in the sacrificial service through the divine revelation and instruction of the two hosts, angels, the Messiah and the Shekinah, who accompanied him on his journey from Gilead. Quote, and he erected there an altar and called it El Elohe Israel, verses 19 and 20, God, the God of Israel. Like Abraham, Jacob set up beside his tent an altar unto the Lord, calling the members of his household to the morning and the evening sacrifice. It was here also that he dug the well to which, seventeen centuries later, came Jacob's son and savior, and beside which, resting during the noontime heat, he, Christ, told his wandering hearers of that well of water, the Holy Spirit, springing up into everlasting life, John 4:14. 4, End quote. Ibid, page 204. Future Prophecy of Jacob's Seed Quote, the blessing ended, Jacob gave his son the assurance, leaving for the generations to come, through long years of bondage and sorrow, this testimony to his faith. Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Now, as his children waited to receive his last blessing, the spirit of inspiration rested upon him, and before him in prophetic vision, the future of his descendants was unfolded. One after another, the names of his sons were mentioned, the character of each was described, and the future history of the tribe was briefly foretold. End quote. Ibid, page 235. Revelation 7 concludes the history of the twelve thousand from each of the twelve tribes, the seed of Israel, who shall stand on Mount Zion with the Lamb. Quote, these, 144,000, 
are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Revelation 14, 2-5 The vision of the prophet pictures them as standing on Mount Zion, girt, girded, encircled, clothed with the Holy Spirit, for holy service, to gather a great multitude of the saved from all the nations of earth in the end of the world, Revelation 7, 9. End quote, Acts of the Apostles, page 591. Quote, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward, eternal life through the Holy Spirit and Eden restored, is with him and his work, gathering the remnant, is before him." End quote. Isaiah 62.11 The sacrificial law under the written word, the written law. 7. Moses and family. Quote, and they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us us with pestilence or with the sword. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And ye shall keep it up unto until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of the four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. End quote. Exodus chapter 5 verse 3, chapter 10 verse 25, chapter 12 verses 3, 6, 40 through 42, and 51. The Unwritten Sacrificial Law it is clearly seen that sacrificial offerings were made by the faithful from the Garden of Eden and by the Israelites long before they were written down. Also, the Sabbath was observed by God's prophets from creation and by the Israelites before Moses wrote them down at Mount Sinai. For meditation, read Exodus chapter 13. Speaking Images of the Trinity as in the beginning, under the spoken word, when the images of the Godhead, Trinity, on earth, a man, Adam, a woman, Eve, and children were represented by successive families, Noah, Abraham, etc., just so the family of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam were representatives of the male and female offices of the Godhead on earth when the Ten Commandments and the Sacrificial Law were to be written down. First, Moses, a representative of the Father. Second, Aaron, of the Son, priest. Third, Miriam, of the Holy Spirit, Shekinah, were visible symbols of the triune divine presence with the children of Israel. Moses, the chief prophet, Aaron, Moses' prophet, and Miriam, the prophetess. Through this family, God shows three deliverers in Israel. Miriam acted as Moses' protector in infancy, Exodus 2.4, symbolizing the divine protection manifested by the Holy Spirit over those who are set apart for a special purpose, as Joseph the type and the Messiah the antitype. The objects to which all the sacrificial offerings pointed. 8. The Messiah and the Shekinah, the family of God. Quote, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, Holy Spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? End quote. Hebrews 9, 14. 
All the sacrificial offerings of the Mosaic system, both male and female, were but shadows of the true sacrifices to be offered in antitype in the New Testament by the Messiah and the Holy Spirit, by the blood and the fire, one who died, Messiah, male, and one ever living, Holy Spirit, female, one offering symbolizing death, the other alive symbolizing life. Hebrews 9:14. Under the direction of the Messiah and the Holy Spirit, quote, the whole system of types and symbols was a compacted prophecy of the gospel, a presentation in which were bound up the promises of redemption. End quote. Acts the Apostles, page 14. The Messiah and the Holy Spirit are two intercessors, Romans 8, 26, and 34, male and female, two sacrifices, two high priests, the Messiah and Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, verses 1 and 14 through 17, male and female, two turtle doves, a pair, Luke 2, 22 through 24, male and female, the Messiah, the firstborn son, and the Holy Spirit, the first mother, are depicted as interceding before the Father for all mankind. Quote, for this Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, abideth a priest continually. Our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood, after the similitude, likeness, of Melchizedek, Holy Spirit Mother. There ariseth another, the Messiah, a second, priest, the son of Melchizedek. End quote. Hebrews 7, verses 1, 3, 14. And 15. Quote, in the last analysis, however, the title Messenger of the Covenant belongs to the Holy Spirit. For example, 1 Peter 3, 18-20 states that Christ preached to the antediluvians by the same Spirit, the Spirit of Elijah, who quickened him. But as he preached by the Spirit in the person of Noah, not of himself, he thereby unfolded the truth that the Holy Spirit is in all his messengers alike. End quote. One Answer a Book, page 79. Quote, Messenger of the Covenant means the Holy Spirit, the invisible Christ, in heaven's visible representative, be it Moses, John, Christ, Elijah, or some other. End quote. One Answer a Book, page 79, parenthesis theirs, quote, Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, end quote, Genesis 14, 18, in the Old Testament era, as well as in the New Testament era, quote, abideth a priest continually, Hebrews 7, 3, whereas her son, Jesus, was not a priest until after his ascension, but after Christ's ascension, his enthronement, appointment as priest in his mediatorial priestly kingdom was signalized by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit was given. End quote. Christ's Object Lessons, page 120. Quote, From time to time, divinely appointed messengers of truth, inspired by the Holy Spirit Mother Melchizedek, were to be raised up to call attention to the meaning of the sacrificial ceremonies and especially to the promise of Jehovah concerning the advent of the one, another priest, Hebrews 715, toward whom all the ordinances of the sacrificial system pointed. End quote. Prophets and Kings, page 687. Quote, his death was the antitype of all the sacrificial offerings, and that his ministry, priest after the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 717, in the sanctuary in heaven was the great object that cast its shadow backward and made clear the ministry of the Jewish, Levitical, not Melchizedek, priesthood. End quote. Acts of the Apostles, pages 246 and 247. At the baptism of Christ, the preparation for his great service, the symbol of the dove upon his head, encircling him with a halo of purest light, was an earnest of the promise to restore man and woman 
to their original purity to dwell in the sight of the Trinity and speak with them face to face. Revelation 22.4 A partial fulfillment occurred on the day of Pentecost in the Spirit's outpouring upon the 120, which was another token of the final glory to be imparted to the remnant of God in the latter reign. Quote, and after these things I saw another angel, a message about the Holy Spirit, come down, descending, from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his, her, glory. End quote. Revelation 18, 1. Quote, As the ministration of Jesus closed in the holy place, and he passed into the holiest, and stood before the ark containing the law of God, he sent another mighty angel with a third message given to a woman, e.g. White, to the world. A parchment was placed in the angel's hand, and as he descended to the earth in power and majesty, he, she, the prophetess, proclaimed a fearful warning with the most terrible threatening ever born to man. End quote. Early Writings, page 254. Read all of pages 254 and 255. So, today we are to understand that the revelation of the priesthood of Christ was given, in fact, to further reveal a priesthood hitherto hidden, enclosed in the mystery of God, the continual, everlasting, from the beginning, priesthood of the Holy Shekinah, Holy Spirit, who through the revelation of the sacrificial system, shall now build the temple of the Lord. Zechariah 6, 13.